So this is a video uh, about some math games that you can play with a standard deck of cards with all of the face cards removed. Um, and it is for targeted practice with positive and negative numbers in addition and multiplication. The two games I'm going to explain are positive and negative integer addition war and positive and negative integer multiplication war. They're both based on the card game war where two players flip up a card and you see which one's bigger and uh, that player gets to keep those cards. Uh, so for both games, because they're, we're tar trying to target uh, the skill of working with positive and negative integers, for both games, all black cards are going to have a positive value, where either of these sixes would be a plus six. And all red cards have a negative value, so the six of diamonds and the six of hearts would uh, be worth negative six. Each one would be worth negative six. So keep that in mind as we go. Um, first off, uh, for Addition War, I'd like to show you just kind of the way, uh, one of the best ways I've used to, to talk to kids about uh, what happens when you add uh, and subtract positive and negative integers. And that is to think about a really simple number line with zero in the center here, positive, uh, you know, addition moving always to the right on our number line where the numbers are getting larger. And when we subtract, no matter where we start, we're always moving to the left or getting smaller on the number line, even when we're going past zero. So uh, if we take a look at this example of four plus three, if I had the super basic number line, I could even put my finger on four, which would maybe be about here. Plus three would have me going in this direction. Five, six, seven, four plus three equals seven. Let's take a look at another uh, addition problem. This time I'm starting at negative four, which would be about here on my number line. Four to the left of zero. And then when I'm adding three, I'm still moving in the right. So negative four plus three is going to bring me to negative one. Now, when I'm adding a negative number, it's the same as subtracting, I'm always moving this way. I'm always moving this way on my number line. So if I start at negative four, which is here, and go back, add a negative three, I'd be moving in this direction, which would leave me at negative seven. And if I start at four over here and move a negative three, it's going to be back in this direction and I'll be at one. So uh, if you're playing with your students or um, if you're playing with your kids and playing this game, this little thing on a scratch piece of paper, zero with a number line, maybe even the positive and negative arrows would be just a great tool that you can march your fingers along to help them if they get any of them wrong. Now let's take a look at the game. It's three steps. Player one flips up two cards and adds them. Player two flips up two cards and adds them. And the player with the greatest value keeps all four of the cards. Let's take a look at some examples. Player one flips up a red seven and a uh, black five. So that's negative seven plus five, and that's going to equal negative two. Player two flips up a black four and a red ace. Aces are always worth one. Four plus a negative one is three. Since three is greater than negative two, Player two would keep all four of the cards. And then it starts over. Flip up two more cards. So the next round, let's see, we've got uh, a red three and a red four. Negative three plus negative four is negative seven. A red eight and a red five would be negative eight plus negative five is equal to negative 13. Negative seven is greater than negative 13 because it's closer to zero. If we go back to our number line, we'd say, okay, where would negative seven be? Maybe it's here. And where's negative 13? It's going to be all the way over here. So which one's greater? Well, the one farther along to the right on our number line is greater. This is why this number line is a really great um, you know, visual for kids. It's a great way to have that conversation, to be able to put our fingers on the number line and talk about which one's greater or which way we're moving when we're adding or subtracting. Uh, so let's take a look at our example here. Wait, uh, OK. Negative 7 is greater, so player 1 keeps the cards in this one. In this example, uh, we've got 4 plus a negative 3 is 1, and negative 8 plus 9 is 1. Here we have a tie. So in war, uh, you know, uh, this is called war. That's what the game's named after. Uh, and here's what you do. You flip down two cards face down, two cards face down, then two cards face up, and you add these. 2 plus a negative 2 would be 0. The same player does 2 down, 2 down, 2 up. Or the player 2 does 2 down, 2 down, 2 up. This would be negative uh, 5 plus 4 would be negative 1, so we got 0 to negative 1, and the 0 uh, is greater. So player 1 gets to keep all of these cards, every last one of them. So wars are really how you kind of win this game. But everybody gets some good practice in, so it's a great game.
Okay, uh, a couple variations you can do for uh, addition war with positive and negative integers. Uh, you could change it so that the smallest value wins. So shuffle the cards uh, back up and say, okay, on this one, uh, whoever gets the smallest number is going to win. You're going to take all the cards. Uh, another thing you could do is uh, play subtraction war, uh, where the rules would change a little bit, um, just whether or not you're subtracting. But that would be a good variation to toss in with this game, too. Next, let's talk about uh, positive and negative integer multiplication war. The game is exactly the same in the rules, except that when we flip up the two cards, we're now multiplying them. Uh, a quick note about just multiplication of positive and negative integers in general. Um, this is a chart I've seen used in a lot of textbooks and a, a kind of a great way to represent all of the possibilities for positive and negative integers when you're multiplying. And that is that a positive number times a positive number equals another positive number. A negative number times a negative number will equal a positive. A positive times a negative equals a negative. And a negative times a positive equals a negative. Um, there are many ways you can show this to be true. Uh, a couple of the most popular ways I've heard of it, um, the way I learned was that um, multiplying by negative does the opposite. So uh, I start with a positive number, I multiply by a positive, um, and it's going to remain positive. Here I start with a negative, and when I multiply by a negative, it does the opposite of that, so it's going to turn it positive. And here you can see that thinking about a multiplying by a negative or divi even dividing by a negative, doing the opposite, it changes whatever the first value is or keeps it the same. So that can be a good way to think about it. Uh, other kids, one of my students actually in algebra this year, uh, I don't know if he came up with this rhyme or heard it somewhere, but he said, uh, you know, if your signs match on match.com, then they have a positive result. So these signs match. Um, and they have a positive result, and these signs don't match, and he always threw in on match.com, uh, and, you'd, and you'd get, you know, they have a negative result. Uh, so here the signs don't match, and they get a negative result. Um, some kids thought that was pretty funny, and it definitely stuck in their heads. Uh, so maybe not the most mathematically sound way to think about it, but uh, it, certainly, it certainly works. So when it comes time to play Multiplication War, I flip up uh, two cards here, player one, negative seven times five is negative 35. Player 2 says 4 times a negative 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 is greater than negative 35, so player 2 wins and keeps all four cards. Next round, player 2 flips up 2. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. 40 is greater than 12, so player 2 wins again. On the third round, we have 4 times a negative 3 equals negative 12. And player 2 says negative 6 times 2 equals negative 12. We're in a war situation because it's a tie. So same rules as uh, addition. 2 down, 2 down, 2 up, and multiply them. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And same player, uh, player 2 over here says 2 down, 2 down, 2 up. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Well, negative 4 is greater than negative 20, so player 2 takes all the cards. And that's multiplication war. So uh, one of the, the beauty of both of these games is that it allows for a lot of very quick practice. Um, because we're flipping up cards, it definitely feels like a game. It's kind of exciting. Um, but really, the amount of mental math practice that's going into this is you know, really, really valuable. Uh, if you have a student who's having a lot of trouble, anything you can do to slow it down, including maybe even writing out, uh, you know, flipping up the cards and then writing out the problem that it tells you to, uh, can slow kids down and really give them that uh, practice with writing uh, an addition or a multiplication sentence correctly uh, if that's what they need some additional help with. So uh, a lot of variations with these. Use them, have fun, uh, and enjoy the games.